Hello everybody! Today we will talk about system modeling and control design. Uh, a few words about gametes. We are the local distributor. We pretty much offer the same services that the Metworks does. So presentations like this, also licensing, training, and consultants as well. What we will talk about is simulink and more specifically control system design. Before we have a control system, we need to have the model of our system. That's why I will start with modeling approaches. Let's see how can we get a accurate model. Well, there are a couple of approaches. There is the first principle approach. This means that we know our system well and we are able to build our system using differential equations or something called physical modeling. So this means that we have specific domain knowledge and we are able to build our system from scratch. At the other end, there is the data-driven modeling approach when we do not know much or anything about the system. However, we have some measurement data and we can use system identification to get a system model. I will start with the front first principle modeling and the one of the possibilities is to use simulink and block diagrams. We will look at this example with a motor. So we have a motor on one side with some inertia and an inertia on the other side and a position sensor. The interesting part about this system is that this connection is with a spring and we want to achieve position control. As you can imagine, position control of the second element is quite hard if the motor is connected to this element with a spring. How can we build a control system? First, we need the model. We write down the differential equations for the system and then we implement that in Simulink. So when we are talking about Simulink, each Simulink is built of blocks. Each block has some input signals, output signals, and does some kind of computation inside. So signals in, signals out. There is another approach when we are talking about first principle modeling and the second approach is called Simscape. So physical modeling or in MATLAB is called Simscape, the language. In this case, we are not talking about signals in and signals out anymore. These are actual physical connections. So this would be the inertia here of the motor and this connection. Then there is friction between the actuator housing here and this element and the motor. So here we have the friction. Then we have this flexible shaft, which has, it's modeled like an idea spring. However, we also have uh, friction inside or damping inside the spring. So if you push together several times a spring, you will feel that it heats up. And it heats up because of the internal friction. So that is the friction here or damping. 
Then we have the inertia of this element here, load inertia. And then we have the friction or damping between this housing and the second disk. The difference here is quite significant. Instead of signals in and signals out, these are physical connections in, physical connections out. There is actually no like input and output port here because all of these are computed at the same time. So it's not like I start from this input signal and I compute something and then I compute the output. It works differently. It has a different solver technology. So this example is for a mechanical system, but we have similar systems for electrical circuits as well. So I will have an example for that sh shortly. Now there is a third approach. Uh, the second approach, as I mentioned, is the data-driven modeling approach or system identification in this case. So we can do some system identification in the frequency domain or time domain. I will have a couple of examples of this as well. And then we can use that model in our simulating environment as well. And the third approach is between the two. So the third approach means that we do know how our system looks like. And we were able to build our system using first principle modeling. However, we are not sure about the parameters. So we, are, we build our system, but we also have some measurement data. We run the simulation and realize that the simulation does not match the measure data. However, we know that these parameters might be different and we want to find out what are these parameters based on measurement data. So we specify for the optimization algorithm that we are looking for these parameters and we have this model and we have this measurement data. And then it will run optimization algorithms until it finds the right parameters for our model. This is called parameter tuning. Just the products that are necessary for different approaches. And just a few words, uh, one electrical example, why physical modeling tools, Simscape, can be interesting for a lot of customers. So let's see, we have a simple RC circuit. We can model this using simulating blocks. As I mentioned here, we have input signals. This is just a simple transfer function and we will have an output signal or we can compute this using physical modeling tools. In this case, this is not a signal, this is a physical connection, this is a wire, this is a resistance and this is a capacitor. Why is this interesting? Let's see we are done with our design and the customer tells us that everything perfect they are really satisfied with the product the only difference is that they want to add another resistor and capacitor so what do we need to do in this case if we are using simulating unfortunately we pretty much need to rewrite the differential equations and implement re-implement that part of the code. In physical modeling, we add those two elements and we are done. We have specialized libraries for this physical modeling, for hydraulic, thermal liquid, two-phase fluid, gas, 
moist air, electrical, mechanical, magnetic, thermal, and we can build our own as well. So let's look at our example. So we have an electrical motor. However, we are not sure about the parameters. We do know what are the equations or how does this motor look like modeled in with physical modeling tools. However, we do not know what is the friction, what is the inertia, what is the inductance, and so on. But we have some measurement data. So we run the simulation and we check out the measurement data and we see that there is a huge difference between the two. So we select the parameters that we are not sure about and then we run the optimization algorithms. So let's dive into it. I have a power window example. This would be a typical use case. So we have some window switches with some electronics. These are modeled using Simscape electronics or just basic Simscape. So here we have physical connections, switches, and so on. To go from to go from Simulink to Simscape, we have some special blocks. These are Simulink to Simscape blocks. And to go from Simscape to Simulink, we need to use some sensor. So this is a voltage sensor, and then we transform that voltage measurement into a Simulink signal. So here we will have for the input always some kind of source, voltage source or current source or force force. And on the outside, we need some kind of measurement, some kind of sensor. Then we have our control algorithm. And as you might know, if we have quite complicated logic, that controls the behavior of our system. The easiest way to build such system is state flow. And I will touch on this topic a bit more detail later on. And then we have the model of our power window. Which does have an electrical part and it does have a mechanical part as well. So here is the input from our controller, state flow controller. Here we have the motor. So this is a, the power source and we have the commands. And here we have the electrical mechanical transformer. So this part of the Simscape is electrical and these are wires. And this part is mechanical, so this is shafts. And this block illustrates well how we can connect different domains. So this is just one example to connect electrical with mechanical. However, we have similar blocks to connect, let's say, electrical to heat or mechanical to heat or hydraulical to heat. So these are all possibilities or hydraulical to mechanical and so on. All of these connections are possible with such blocks. So this was the motor part, and then we have the mechanical part of the power window. So how does the window actually work? And this part is built using Simscape multibody. 
Thank you for tuning in. If you would like to learn more, check out our other videos and webinars as well, or join us on our training events.